All right, Katie, Hi. welcome, hello. Thanks for having me. So, a little bit about yourself. Um, how did you end up at Hinge? Um, what exactly do you do now? And what's your favorite part of the job? Oh, wow, okay. So, I'll be very clear. I never went into my career graduating from college 10 years ago and was like, I wanna go brand a dating app and like work in a dating app. I never even thought a year ago if you'd asked me that I would be ever working at a dating app. Uh, but what happened was I was very lucky and very privileged to start my career as the third employee of Warby Parker and had an amazing three years there and grew a team from three to 200 and now we're at 700 and it was an amazing run. And after that I was like, okay, so I conquered that and I was like, team, I love you Warby, but like I gotta go out and try something else. And I went out into the world and was like, all right, I'm gonna try and do this for a bunch of other brands, right? Let's see if we can do this again and ended up working with over 30 brands over the last three years. And Hinge was actually a client. And they happened to be the client that I kept showing up at their offices, like even late at night and being like, hey, like I thought maybe you might want this piece of copy or this project. And they kept being like, all right, thanks. You know we're not paying you for this, but welcome to the conversation. And um, in February, I joined the team full time as their chief brand officer because I actually felt that I was having the privilege of being part of a conversation I really cared about. As a person who is single and living in New York and works in technology, I kind of saw what could happen here, right? We could go in a really bad direction. We could go in a direction where we all start to not really care about each other and dating becomes this really inhumane, terrible place. And I was like, I kind of think I can solve this. I think I can make dating good and human. And I think part of it is brand and perception, but I also think it was also product. So uh, Hinge hired me in in February as their chief brand officer to come in and rebrand and really take a look at the company and also take a look at the product. So I've been working with our users Amazing. for like four months, uh, now six months now. I am in focus groups twice a day. If anybody wants to come for a focus group, I love that. Um, and I promise to give you as much of my time afterwards, like if you have any questions after a focus group. But like, I just talk to users all day and we talk about the future of dating all day. So what is the future of dating? Oh God, okay. So I think dating's going in two ways, right? There's the fun, gamified version of dating where we kind of swipe through each other and we don't really think about it. Uh, and that's fun, and there's a place in the world. That's the starter drug, right? You feel comfortable because you've done it. Everybody swipe stars. The this, this swipe starter drug, right? Uh, and that gets us all comfortable with the idea of online dating. But then I actually think that there's this other side of it, which is relationship-focused. And it's for people that really want a meaningful connection. And I would say what really opened my eyes to that and actually made me feel like that's a real thing in this world was I can clock it. In a focus group, every single person spends 29 minutes telling me how great their dating life is. I go on 100 dates a week, I am so happy, oh my god, I love it. And at minute 29, every single person breaks down and tells me how freaking lonely they are. So, we gotta fix this, right? We gotta make it better. True, true. Minute 29, that's, Minute the, 29, that's it. the break point. We all, we, all, we all give up the facade at 29. So, so there are tons of dating apps out there right yeah. now. Um, and in ter so Hinge, would you say, as, as the chief branding officer, what role does branding play in terms of separating yourself from that and being in a more relationship-focused world? So on the product side, I think everybody kind of knows us as a friends of friends app. So we connect you to your friends' friends. And there's a lot of transparency in that, right? You see someone's full name. You see where they work. Um, you see a lot of the apps kind of trying to incorporate this stuff now. But uh, what it's allowed us to do as a brand is create trust. You know who you're talking to. And also, it's like... If you're talking to me and we have a mutual friend, you're not going to be a jerk because next time I run into our mutual friend, I'm going to be like, what's wrong with that dude? He was awful. Like, here's our text messages. What a jerk. Uh, so I think for us, it's actually starting to brand more towards relationships and starting to really own that space. I think we've been a little anxious about it, right? We've been like, who, who actually wants to admit that they want a relationship? And then we get all these people in and they're like, I really want a relationship. So I think in terms of the brand, that's where we'll be going. We've already owned the space, actually. It's just putting a stake in the ground and being like, yeah, relationships, we're comfortable with that. Yes, yes. So would you say that 
going toward looking in the future, because this is kind of a new dating online, dating app technology, we don't see the results as much yet. Um, do you see this going towards something that will reduce the divorce rate, let's say, going into the future? Oh, we all laugh, but it actually is technically reducing the divorce rate right now. Um, we have 15% of US Americans are on dating apps. And of those people who are getting married out of that, there actually is a lower divorce rate. So I do think that there are a couple of things happening, right? You know, you have an over, you know, uh, you have about a 6% divorce rate from people meeting online currently. Um, and you have a higher rate for, you know, people who are meeting in real life. What I think potentially it gives us is the ability to step back and be like, this is what I'm actually looking for. Um, and maybe it's not just that we meet people that are a product of our situation or, or you know, what we do on a day-to-day -day basis, but maybe we get to say, like, I care about these things and these things are important to me and I want to seek those out. Now, that doesn't mean that if you swipe through, like the average New York male who swipes 90 minutes a day, uh, <laughs> that guy right there, um, <laughs> that you're going to find that. But I think if you're relationship oriented and you're actually looking to get married and find someone, it's not a bad thing to have options and to actually you know, look for something. We're also, as a generation, getting married later in life, which right. I think is a great thing. You know what you want a little bit more, and you've seen a lot of different things. So on the flip side of that, mm -hmm. the concept of love ADD. Yes. Right. So not only finding the best options, but then realizing, wow, there are a lot of best options out there. How do you... <laughs> there are maybe, a lot. Um, how does that play a role in terms of getting people so they're not, the grass is always greener, that, that mentality? Sure. So when we look at apps that are not Hinge, you have an unlimited pool of people that you can swipe through on a given day. Um, for us, we use a smart algorithm, and we actually only give you 10 people to 20 people a day to look at. Uh, what we think this actually does is everybody goes into the world saying, I think I want this, right? They come into the world and, and they come into our offices and they're like, I would like someone who is Ivy League educated, seven feet tall, and has blue eyes. And then when they actually start swiping on people, that's not actually the case. They actually begin to swipe right on a lot of people that they didn't think they were going to like. They end up in relationships with people that they were like, oh, this person made me laugh or they're really funny. So I think there is ADD when we look at some of the other apps. But when I look at Hinge, we're focusing in on what you are actually telling us. So our algorithm gets smarter and smarter every time you use it. And at the same time, we're showing you to people who want to meet you as well. So in a world in a pool of 90 minutes a day of swiping, where the average male is swiping right on 67% of profiles, and the average female is only swiping right on 12% of profiles. What? <laughs> what? Yeah. Uh, there's a lot of mismatched intentions happening. And we have men doing what we call filtering on the back end, where they match with as many people as possible, and then they look at them. Uh, and whereas women are like, they've seen someone and they're like, I want to meet this person in, in real life. Like, I actually might be interested. And then the guy never messages them because they're actually talking to 200 people and they're filtering on the back end. So what's actually happening is fatigue, too. Like, dudes don't want to actually swipe for 90 minutes a day to actually end up on a date um, and actually convert onto a date. And women don't want to have to swipe right on all these people and be like, I'm really interested and then never hear anything. And so by limiting the pool, we really feel like, and having a smarter algorithm, we've, we're putting people together who actually want to be together. Mi like, good intentions towards each other, right? They both are looking for something. They both want to be on a date with each other. They both want to have a conversation. Um, Great. So, so right now it's a, a connecting service, and you're, and you're filtering that out. Do you see Hinge moving in any way down the line of, of staying involved in some way within relationships, Hinge testimonials, Hinge weddings? Um, you know, I don't think so. I don't think people necessarily want us in their lives after they've gotten there. And I think part of what, what is... Uh, I think we set out to build technology. A lot of reasons we set out to build technology is efficiency, right? You wanted to find something. You wanted to find something better. And then I think what we did was then we just gamified it so that people would stay on apps longer. We're like, oh, you know, like we started out thinking that it would be really fun for you to actually go on a date. But now, <laughs> let's have you swipe. Um, and in reality, like, 
technology is supposed to be actually making your life better and more efficient and helping you find what you really want. And so I don't think that the future of a great dating app or a great relationship app is actually about us staying involved and like monetizing your life once you're happy. It's actually probably about us getting you in, out and in person with people you actually want to meet as quickly as possible. So it's, it's more about getting you in person with someone so you can see if you're attracted to them and like go to the next fun stuff. You don't need us there. So no perks for a successful relationship. I don't think so. I don't think you need to reward happiness. I don't know. We'll see. I'm open to anything when it comes to product. But uh, I would rather just have a lot of people keep writing, writing in and telling me that they're getting married and having babies and they're happy. And we get that all day, every day, which makes me really happy. I mean, we, we put people on 50,000 dates a week. And out of those 50,000 dates, 3,000 turn into our relationships. Guys, it, this, wow. is, this is good. You should be on there doing this, right? I mean, come on. Get Hinge. <laughs> um, that's great. Hinge babies. Hinge, we have Hinge babies, guys. Wow. Yeah. So yeah. as the brand officer, um, moving forward with Hinge as a brand right now, what are, if you can discuss anything that's coming down the pipeline of, of Hinge to, or Hinge in the future? For me, it's about listening to our users and our members who already think of us as being very relationship oriented but want us to put a stake in the ground. And I think it's time. Listen, there is nothing out there right now that really is branded and owns that space, right? We have you know, Tinder, which is very casual, and then you have Match.com, which is very relationship oriented, but your aunt's on there, or your mom and dad, and like, there's screen names, and like, that's, that's not, mm -mm. Like, when did you last have a screen name? Can we talk about that? Um, so I feel like, for us, it's branding being relationships for people that are younger, right? Like, it's branding being in relationships for people that are around, like, in their 20s and 30s that actually Actually want something and don't want a one night stand. And it's not to knock no one night stands, guys. Like, everybody should go after what they want in this world and be honest. But if you honestly want something more, like, I want to build a place for you to have that. Amazing. So, finding something real. Find something real. <laughs> that looks like a happy couple, right? Don't there. they look happy? Look That's at a hinge his couple. Man They're going to make hinge babies. I know, hinge babies. Um, I mean, and then. In terms of the brand, again, going back to this, with the future of dating, positioning yourself in a way that, are you trying to say we are different than what's out there, or we are our own world? You know, it's fine if you want something else, but if you are coming to Hinge, that you're looking for something real. We're our own world. I don't judge, none of our team judges. Our team is on all the apps, and they use them yeah. for different things. And I think you have to know sort of, there's a no judgment policy. Listen, like there's a room in this world that is Tinder and it is fun. Like it's fun to swipe on faces and it's fun to do those things. But if there's a room like Tinder that exists in the world, I really felt that it was a calling in my career to build a room that existed that maybe you didn't have to deal with the same things that you deal with on other apps. That maybe it was a little bit more respectful and relationship oriented. And as a woman, that was really important to me. I wanted that to exist in the world for myself. I wanted to use that. And so going forward and creating that is a really important mission for me. It's a mission for our team. It's what we talk about. But there's no judgment. It's like, hey, that other room is really fun too. That's really great. We have a lot of people who are really happy over there. But if people are not happy there, why shouldn't there be an alternative? Right. And then go on the more technical side of it, the idea of predicting compatibility. Yes. What are you doing in the sense that you say limited to 10 a day? How are you working with that and, and using technology to be like, OK, these people would be great together? Yeah. So we do have a smart, ever learning algorithm. Um, so as you swipe, we learn your taste. Um, however, I think the next sort of phase of that is that we've seen how powerful Friends of Friends is. You know, we actually, like, in your actual life, you only meet 2 to 3% of your Friends of Friends, but they actually are statistically the best partners for you. They share commonality with you. They share past experience. They share sort of common interests. Don't we all want to, like, meet someone who's not going to fight over Netflix with us? Because I know I do. Um, but for us, I think the future in the technology sense is how do you uncover 
more meaningful commonality and what is actually meaningful commonality. And that's where we're really diving in. You know, we're talking to people about what they're really looking for in terms of like things that matter at the end of the day, what they talk about on their first date, how they knew that the person that they were talking to is the person for them. And some of it is slightly superficial, right? We have people that, you know, swipe right a lot on like the big 10 schools, or we have people who swipe right a lot on people who work in tech, actually. That's a big bucket these days, kind of like rock stars in the room. Um, so, uh, but at the end of the day, like it's actually about uncovering commonality and surfacing it in a way that I think like, okay, so if you went through eHarmony, right? You go to sign up for eHarmony, you have to answer an hour of questions. But you get to the end of that and you're like, the other people here have answered an hour of questions. I mean, they might be 50, but they've answered an hour of questions and like maybe then we have things in common. Is there a way in a lightweight app world for us to get to the heart of what those questions really uncover and start to show you people that like have those same things? And so that's what we like, we nerd out about this all the time, guys. So that's our entire office nerding out about uh, what actually connects people. And how to build that into technology is, is our next question. Yeah. Towards the common goal of love. Yes. Amazing. Well, thank you so much. Thank you. Katie, I think we have time for about two questions from the crowd. So shoot your hands up. Anyone? There we go. I do. You can all find me on Hinge. <laughs> There's only 10 people there. So if you swipe fast, it's over and you got to move on <laughs> to the next thing. No, it's about, it's about trying to create rich profiles, trying to actually get you to take a look at the person as a human. And hopefully if you actually start viewing that person as a human again versus a card that you swiped on, maybe you'll have a real conversation with them. Maybe you'll end up in person with them and really like them. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. Thanks, One more time for Katie Un, CEO of Hinge.